Watch my gun and go Put a hole in your top dog You snitch to the feds She's great, the cop car It's a party, let's pop bottles Look at these hoes in here Front like models Make sure the coast is clear Let's have a toast this year I'm the dopest year The most focused here Hey, welcome to the show. Today's episode, we got the legendary H Rider in the building, legendary rapper from the US. Welcome aboard, man. What's going on, Planet? H Rider for the record, you know what I mean? All praises be to Allah. You know, um, still grinding, still shining, still maintaining, still aiming at the game, you know? Um, through a, taking your body here, you know what I mean? Definitely, man. Yeah, it's, it's good to finally talk to you on here. Do you mind starting off telling us where, about where you're from? I'm from Los Angeles, California. Born and raised. Uh, been around the U.S. for you know, lives in a couple of different cities. But um, yeah. Naturally, where I'm from is, and like I said, born and raised is Los Angeles, California, South Central LA, be exact. Wow, that's awesome, man, and. I've seen you've been around so many legends in the in the music industry, and you're a legend yourself. When did you first taking it back get involved in music, or you know get that first bit of passion? Uh, I can honestly say, I when I first heard rap because you know I'm born in a, an interesting time, right when rap came out. You know what I mean, and um. But I had to at least, you know, get some age, get age on me and um, things of that nature. I heard the first song I can remember as the first song was Friends. How many of us have them? Friends. But I didn't want to be a rapper. I was a kid. I liked the song. Like I said, rap was new at the time. So, yeah. Uh, but when I wanted to do music myself, I can say NWA is the first people who influenced me back in, i say, like, 89, I wanted to probably rap. Yo. NWA, that was, yeah, one of my first groups I, I heard when I was first started listening to rap music as well. So, yeah, shout out to the legends there. Yeah, I, I definitely want to be the sixth member of NWA, you know what I mean? So after that, it was like, um, that started to spark, and then, I was blessed to be fortunate enough to be around Tupac and Big Psych. And Psych is how I got introduced to Tupac. Psych and a guy named Anouk. Um, I met Tupac through them, but I was young. I was like 14, 15 years old. But Pac attracted a lot of lost souls, and he can see the lost soul in my eyes and you know, I was never questioning on who was this nigga and why is he around. And I was young, smoking weed, you know, just being part of the fellas, man. I never really truly voiced how I felt about the situation. I had to play it off and act like it was normal, but it wasn't normal. I was a kid during high school uh, around guys like that. You know what I mean? So it was a... <laughs> that would have been yeah. pretty cool, but... True story, true story. Yeah, and that's, yeah rest in peace to... Tupac and Big Psych. I, I love Big Psych too. Yeah, yeah, Big C. That's my nigga. Um, obviously, Machiavelli the Don. You know, they influenced me. Now, when I was around them, that's when it was, you know, all she wrote. It was like, this is what I want to do. Yeah. And, and you, I mean? you would have learned heaps just hanging around those guys too. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. A lot of things. Definitely. Um, Motivated my, cause when I got around my own peers, I felt the hit events because I was learning from and watching these guys. You know what I mean? So when I would get around people my age, I would always feel ahead because I was soaking up so much game around older men my whole life. I was I'm the youngest of my brothers, and you know I had a great father. My father was big time, and that's how I met Pac through my father. Cause my father was uh, dating uh, Manute mother and. That was his girlfriend. So once I realized that they was around Tupac, then it was easy for me to manipulate my way around that situation because that's my people. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So they've been knowing me since I was a kid before diapers and all that type of stuff. So yeah, it was it was yeah. you know blessing, man. That's awesome. That would have been you know pretty crazy times back then as well. 
bit rough and you know just been networking pretty good like before social media is all about talking to each other as well and hanging out all right right yeah man so if we had social media back then oh my goodness <laughs> be a different world yeah. now and crazy 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 but you know we made up things in the game we made our own name we made our own memories we made our own pictures you know what i mean so it's pictures in my brain to this day i don't think i actually had a picture with me and tupac sitting it was uh, uh i think it was 94 and it was uh the super bowl and it was buffalo versus dallas and he was dressed in dallas colors and i was dressed and Buffalo Bills colors. I had white, blue polo shirt. The Rossi. I thought it was popping. You know what I mean? The yeah. pop came. He had the uh, the Dallas hat to the back with the sky blue Jordans. I remember it to the day, right? <laughs> and <laughs> he's sitting on the, on a chair. He's sitting next to me on the couch. Mm -hmm. I'm eating a piece of pie. And he's joking. I'm like looking at him, smiling. And I had the picture. As a kid, I took it to school, you know, one day, one day of taking this picture to school, it was so ripped up and people would grab it and say, oh, my God. Like, as Pac was a superstar before, rappers was actually stars, you know what I mean? People had a different reaction to Pac, you know? Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, I ended up losing the picture. But I, like I said, we wasn't taking pictures that much back then. And if we was, I had thousands of pictures. But that one particular picture... Is um unfortunately off in the world somewhere. Damn. I was young, possible, and I uh like I said, I didn't know that we was gonna live a world of pictures. So this is like '94. I got the picture in '95. Started messing off, going to school with it, and uh, but I know exactly what happened to the picture. I I was in a I had a car when I was 15, which I didn't have a driver license. And in California, if you got caught driving a car with no license, they would give you a car, a 30 day old. And the picture was in that car, I ended up losing the car and the rest is history. You know what I mean? Someone's got that picture somewhere. But the picture's in my mind. I got way more pictures than that. You know what I mean? That we it was in the studio. Pac used to actually ask me to rap. Wow. He's, I'm a few rappers that can say, I turn Pac down. And I don't know arrogant shit because I'm going to be truthful. I, I was scared. I was nervous. You know what I mean? So I was on, I was young. And I didn't feel like I, I, I was, I just didn't have the confidence yet. I wanted to be my tip top and I still was, you know, so, but when Pac died, I came out of my shell. The first time I ever rapped was on the Outlaw CD, which is called Ride With Us and Collide With Us. And the first song I was featured on was called Mass Down. Yeah. And uh, my career was started from there, you know? Yeah, I was going to ask you about that song too, on the Outlaws the LP ride with us or collide with us. How did that come about? That song and you jumping on it. Do you remember? Uh, I mean, it was just my time, man. And um, like I said, me and Mill, when Pac died, we became a little homies. You know, me and Camille, that's uh, Napoleon, little brother, and the Outlaws took the role of the big homies. You know, what I mean, even though we was a few years apart, they was older than us, had more experience, and so we became a little homies. And, you know, Muta and Castro and Edie and No became more of, a, a, you know, playing a role of more experience. But at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? I was just, I was hungry. You know, we was, I was around. I was, I was the, one of the artists. The first artist, the artist that was supposed to come out was me and Mill. And they had a couple of other acts that was in the making. But I was one of them, you know what I mean? On Outlaw Records, but... Unfortunately, things, you know, didn't take didn't, didn't go as planned yeah. as we all beginning. But we was young, like I said, we seventeen. Pac died about seventeen. They was like 18, 19, 20 years old. You know what I mean? So everybody was young and moving fast. But Mass Down was a classic. It was me, Noble, Napoleon, Edie, and um, this girl named Yayo. Yeah, wow. Yeah. It's it's funny, you know. To, everyone was so young back then, but it's like everyone was so ahead of their time as well. Word, word, definitely. But I had to come out my shell. I wasn't scared no more. You know what I mean? I was ready. Until because yeah. I used to, I used to actually 
be very mad at myself and be like, man, I can't believe that I didn't fucking rap for Pac because I feel like my career was done. All I had to do was go in there and just spit some shit. He would have because I was so young. Yeah. He would have gave me this. Like, ah, that was raw, little nigga. Keep going. You know what I mean? But I was just nervous. And this happened more than once. That's just crazy. Yeah. It would come a time when it was just get on me. The spotlight would get put on me. I had little H getting the booth. And I'm like, yo, chill. To the point, one time, yo, once I was literally, I felt my leg, I was shaking. You know what I mean? I was that nervous, you feel me? But no one else, I was look wondering, could anybody else notice it? I'm like, oh, shit. You know what I mean? But yeah. I calmed myself down. And um, for a while, I was very, 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 very upset at myself. Like, wow. Pac used to ask me to rap, now he's dead. It can never happen again. It's not going to happen no more. Why the fuck did you rap, nigga? So imagine having to live with that your whole life. But God is so merciful that he said, you know what? I ain't going to do the young brother like that. I'm going to still let him be a part of history. Let him get with these guys. And boom. Because when Pac died, the law snatched me up. They remember me. They remember me. It's like, oh, that's the little nigga that was, you feel me? So, yeah. That's awesome that, that they took you in and, and yeah, you jumped on that song too. You know, and that's when fucking with nobody, you know what I'm saying? As time went on, the guards started letting down, but at that time, nobody can come around. Pac had just died, and niggas was very, uh, nobody can come around. Yeah. If you off at that moment, right when Pac died, if Pac was fucking with you and all that, you wasn't, you couldn't, you wasn't, you couldn't come around because they was, they, they didn't know who to trust and what was what. So it was, it was that serious. And everything had turned, like tables had turned with me and a lot of people. First, they was the, the connection. And then all of a sudden, I became the connection. All of a sudden, people were asking me, hey, what's up with Woo Whoop? And I'm like, shit, you got to ask them. They got, I don't, I don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's how I like. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Word, word. I know Edie. I did an interview with him recently. I haven't put it out yet, but yeah, he speaks highly of you on there. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I got to check out, man. That's my big bro, man. Um, Edie, I mean, he's actually a witness to my damn near whole rap career, my whole uh, grind. He witnessed it from the top, from the moment I'm telling you about. He remembered that night um, to where he see me at now. You know, he seen me come up. I seen him as well. You know what I mean? I seen him become the boss he became and he earned every every title he got, you know what I'm saying? And still be able to push this forward. You know, this outlaw this uh you know, that's around forever. History. They can say what they want, but in reality, there's nothing like, you know, this outlaw shit. You know what I mean? Nothing, nothing. There's no group that caused such yeah. uh group that come together and cause such friction and such leadership and such uh awareness you know what i mean like the outlaws and the things that machiavelli the don put together and put us all together to, to carry that torch because he knew he's a plotter he knew if when and when he passed that he wanted shit to carry on and you know attract the right type of niggas even for centuries later keep it popping keep it going i mean yeah and and it's it's a fact that it's still going to this day and people are still talking about it and that's from an era before social media and it's still so influential today and the outlaws that's a big statement right there true story true story yeah. I, i've been listening to your song too pandemic baller that's another another banger uh yeah that's cool i got some shit man no i, I yeah. can't lie i'm really disappointed in myself in that department that i have so much so much so much music that i've been holding out and not giving the fan, giving the people. And I'm ashamed of myself for that. And um, I promised myself to really get on it because I got so much, unreal. I got songs with Scarface. I got songs with, uh, I got my artist KV, shout out to my, I got an artist named KV, KV, young KV. Is that King Vibe? Like, yeah. Man. That's my artist. He signed to my label, BMR. And um, yeah. he's hot. He's how we got, we got so much shit and I'm ashamed that I, it's not out for the people to listen to. And I got to get 
on my business. It's called Business Man Records, but I need to get on more on my business because the business side is what turns me away from the music because people are so shady and people are so sneaky and so full of shit that I lose comp. I lose patience. So I need somebody to talk for me and handle my business because, and I, I like to be in the background and yay and nay a situation because I don't have the patience and I can smell a nigga playing with me and then it's going to go somewhere else. Yeah. You feel me? So that's yeah. the only down about the music business is the business itself. It's yeah. such a tricky, sneaky, weird ass situ people, man. And I just get so turned off that I go back to what I know. And that's living yeah. in these streets doing what I do. I'm a survivor, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. The rap, man. Owe me, the rap game owe me, though. I'm going to tell you, they know They know I'm coming for what I want, for what I what they owe. It's just a matter of time. They know they got to break bread or fake dead. You feel me? Yeah. Period. Young little big H rider catch me in traffic, spinning my tires. You heard? Yeah. Man, <laughs> you got to put out that music. As, I'm a big fan of King Vibe, too. Like Both is. That's awesome. I loved his on California Love Part Two. Yeah, vibe is hot. That's my boy. That's my boy for sure. Yeah, man. Yeah. You, you two together. That's man. Yeah, I appreciate it. You, you, you got a good vibe about yourself, man. I appreciate the love. You know, I think that's awesome for you to hold on to a group of people and and, and do your own research and still show love over thirty years later to a situation that's to me that's even more awesome than the guys that's doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I um, appreciate that. Definitely, man. Well, c- can we look forward to like an album or anything coming out soon? Yes, definitely. I got shit ten albums stacked up. That's what I'm saying. I just gotta find the right type of situation. As far as I got my own distribution deal, I got everything, man. I just don't got the right people in my corner that help push forward. I can't do so much by myself. You feel me? Yeah. So that's the biggest problems. Like I said, is that alone. And once I get that figured out a little better, then the music is not the problem, though. I promise you. I got shit where I just step my game up to the point where I won't even notice my own shit. I'm like, wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. For real. Yeah, I need a hate ride, a double-sided album, I think. Yeah, I'm with that. I'm with that. I'm with that. Just for the just for the patience of my fans and the patience of my people, just to flood their ears with a lot of new hate rider shit I'm definitely with. Drop and I have, and like I said, I have so much material that I can give them a double album and still got shit. Mm-hmm. And I'm still recording. As days go, boy, I got my confidence. I'm popping. And I feel like, you know, it's, 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 y'all haven't seen the last of Ace Rider, I promise you. I'm just getting started. And the reason why I didn't really, like I said, pop off like I could have is because a lot of things been going on in my personal life. I lost niggas, niggas died on me. You know, I had one of my artists pass away, V12, rest in peace, V12. You know, I'm still rocking with him, my nigga. He's still thugging with me. Um, in a lot of other situations that fell through, my father does this, no excuses. But all that built characters. You know, character struggle brings character. So I had to get my character and my struggle and combine it all together and get this energy that I can present to y'all. My last chapter, I got to tell my side of the story before I leave the game. You feel me? I was the little fly on the wall. I got some shit to talk about. You know what I mean? Man, definitely. True story. It'd be a good album name right there, too. <laughs> fly on the wall. Fly on the wall, yeah. And tell my side of the story. That's Man. two albums right there. Yeah, for sure, you 100%. Remember? Fly on the wall and fucking tell yeah. my story. You know definitely. what I mean? Man, I, I loved it. the song too, uh, Money with E40. I think it was Money, Money Machine, sorry. Money Machine, yeah. Me yeah. and Fo, oh, big bro right there, Fody Water. You know, I got um, a couple songs with 40. I haven't released yet, but um, I got a couple of joints with 40, you know what I mean? Yeah. Who's someone you haven't worked with that you'd like to link up with? Unfortunately, um, a lot of these young rappers... No disrespect, they just in a different energy, you know what I mean? So, unfortunately, man, I don't, I don't, I don't want to sound arrogant. I'm just serious. Like, they, they, the, you know, the topics and the things that youngsters talk. That's a lot of talent out there. I'm not, I'm not taking the talent, but the talent is there. 
you know, but the topics and the the things that people talk about, I'm just not attracted to too many artists that I would say, man, like I used to be like a Tupac, you know what I mean? Like, oh my God, this thing is so raw. Like, yo, it is not, it's none of that. I had that feeling, unfortunately. So I just want to do shit with my niggas and, and mean, just do things and, you know, whatever it's meant to be, but it's not a lot of artists I can really say that I, I would break my neck to work with, you know? Everybody got a lot of work going on and yeah. It's not a gay on it. It's, no, I'm just not with the agenda, man. Yeah. Outlaw shit ain't for everybody, too. You know what I mean? That's just how it is. It's size cut. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not arrogant on no, I'm better than nobody's shit. It's just that my thought process is not normal. So I can't be around the shit that's normal to people. Like, I'm, I'm, I've am i never been that type of nigga. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm glad True you story. keep doing your thing. Yeah. That's like you got your own, own lane. And I love it. Word, word. Um, what about I guess what what advice would you give to someone and they're just starting out? Like if you could go back and give yourself advice or and anyone coming up, whether it be business or music. Uh my advice is keep God first. You gotta get a relationship with your Lord. I became Muslim over twenty years ago and um it's it's been the it's been the reason why I've been successful, not just in this life, but inshallah, God willing, the next life. So we had, this life is short. This is not our. This is, we go through six stations in life. Six stations means six different places before we get to our final. This is only the third place. You know, what I mean, we still have three more spots to go from here. You know, what I mean, and um, meaning like the grave is the fourth place. The fifth place is the, the resurrection when God going to bring us back to life. And the sixth place is the heaven or hell. You understand? So these are different stages that we go through. Now, for, for my advice to these young niggas or females or anything, you would never be successful if you forget the, the one who gave you eyes, gave you lips, gave you teeth, gave you a nose, gave you air, gave you sun, moon, stars, Water, everything under the sun, God has given. Man did not create these things. Yet, still, what man create, we gotta pay for. We pay money. God don't want your money. God created things. He does want something from us, and that's the remembrance of Him. Now, if you can remember God five times a day throughout the day, you will be successful. Pray, worship your Lord. Not just even remember. You have to do some acts of worship. You understand? You have to do some things to let you know that it's one unit entity that you bow down to, period. And if you, you do that, then you'll be successful in any department you choose to be in. Other than that, you lost, it's fucked off, you ain't gonna be shit, ain't gonna have shit. Even if you obtain something, you'll never be happy because you're not, you're forgetting your Lord. And any nigga that forgets the Lord and forgets that he's in debt to his Lord, but he remembers that he's in debt to a house or a car, come on, bro, that was just Self-expansive. Yeah, man. That's, that's awesome. I love that advice, too. That's really... That's cool. That's... Yeah. I don't know. That's something for me to think about as well. That's really cool. Appreciate it, bro. Real talk. What, what's been the biggest highlight for you when putting together music? Like, has there been any certain moments where that's really stood out for you? Be working hard to... Put all the dot, like you know, even me dying myself, you know, me just getting working to the even the point I'm at now. I have to be proud of myself because you know I'm black and American. I don't want to look at other people's success and shut minds down. Like I've, I've come a long way from Pac asking me to rap and me being scared to you know conflict. Even when I get in the booth, I hear my I hear that I hear that voice. Like, hey, get in the booth, nigga. And I'm like, oh, word, yeah, I'm, I'm there. It's nothing. You know what I mean? I'm getting there now. It's a different feeling. So that highlight alone of me getting, me seeing myself sometime, and I just, because I'm the type of person, I don't give myself a lot of credit, but I'm not going to kick myself down either because that's what we better doing. I mean, we're trained to, you know, give everybody else credit, but when it comes to ourselves and loving ourselves, we don't do it as well. So I have to learn to love myself and love what I do, my accomplishments, because... Nobody else gonna love them if you don't, you know. Wow, 
Yeah, definitely. I I'm, am. I'm music business, and like I said, it's different from my biggest accomplishment of life. Yeah. My biggest accomplishment music business is pushing forward this outlaw shit and taking it to the next level where Pac wanted it to go. That's my goal, you know what I mean? As far as Ace Rider. Now, as far as my life, my biggest accomplishment is already saying, La ilaha illallah, ashahandu and the Muhammadin do us Allah, which translated in English as mean, there's no deity worthy of worship except God alone, with no partners attached, and Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, is his final messenger and his final prophet. That's the highest achievement of life. Fuck the rap. The rap is where anybody, if you look at it, rap is, you know, it's rap, it's music, which we look at music and everybody's miserable, overdosing, you know, also just, it's nothing good that comes from this desire. This is a desirable world. This is desire. We're talking about pure achievement. To me, that's the biggest achievement because anybody can put words together and rap. That's simple. That's cool. Okay, you know what I mean? But who can remember God throughout the day, throughout his life, free willingly? That to me, like no bullshit, that's hard. That's dope to me. And it's dope. It's like, damn, nigga, you got all that going on. You remember your Lord all the time? That's dope. That's achievement. That's achieving. You feel me? Yeah. And then you still live your life. I'm not a square. I'm not in a box. I'm still thugging. I'm still H Y motherfucking riding. I still got struggles. I still I'm not perfecting to be some angel out here. That's not attractive. The angels are angels. I'm a human being. You feel yeah. me? Which but my Lord is so merciful, so awesome, and so forgiving that no matter what I do, if I ask for his mercy and really mean it, I'm uh, he's a, he's the most he's that's one of his names. I call him one. I call him by his names. Ninety-nine different attributes. The most forgiving, the most merciful, the most compassionate. You feel me? The giver of life, the giver of death, the all knowing, the all seeing, the all hearing. These are the, the attributes of your Lord. Call him by them. Wow, that's incredible, man, and that's that's pretty powerful as well. If, if you got that in your life and to, to to focus on that, like you're saying, if you can do that during the day, that's 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 really I, cool. Hey, it's because praying, it's like from morning, you get out to sleep. The first prayer is called Fajr. You get out of your sleep. To, to, to That's that's amazing. And then throughout the day, from noon to mid-noon to sunset to night. So that's like a Wi-Fi. I'm connected to God all day. I got Wi-Fi on. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, man. It's always yeah. got a signal. You dig? And you yeah. got to have that. Want to survive and live in this life and make it to the next, it gotta be the purpose. Definitely. Man, that's I, lo I love that. What what would be a typical day for you then? Like, you know, with with everything you've going on, you know, you always seem busy. I see you on you know social media, you're always either traveling to do something or you're you're doing something. Yeah, you gotta keep these bills paid, man. So yeah. five times a day I besides the praying. Um, you know, I got, I got to stay doing something. So I stay in the studio, stay messing with my artist. My artist is so dope. He be, he said, he be on a, he, he, he go to the beach. He goes anywhere and perform. He's a performer. He's not just a rapper. And so he makes thousands of dollars a day. Every few days, just performing in the street, performing, you know what I mean? Setting up places to go and just start rapping and freestyling and, yeah, he's amazing, man. So, you know, we got to stay busy, stay consistent, stay persistent. And um, the time has come. You know, everybody got a story. Some people blow up in the beginning of their career. Some people blow up in the middle of their career. And some people might blow up in the end of their career. You know what I mean? But keep pushing. Don't give up. And the sky's the limit. You know what I mean? Definitely. And that's awesome. But, it, yeah, you got a good – I love your outlook on everything. What's your – I guess top three books of all time. Like that uh, why are you? That's a that's a good question. Obviously, my first number one book that not, there's nothing come close to it is the Holy Quran. You know what I mean? This is a word that speaks from God Himself. There's no Peter and Paul and Jacob and all these people giving me what God said and what God looks like. It's one author, which is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. 
He sends it down to the angel J Jibril, and it's translated to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That book alone, if you put it on the mountain, the mountain would crush. You know what I mean? Look, it's, it's not even a book. It's called a book, though, but this is, this is heavy, heavy, heavy. I can't even explain it. Yeah. But my second place would be, like I said, Quran with a big, big top. But this has got to be number one in the big, bold letters. And then the second book, I would say, um, Art of War. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yo. Chess movement and how thinking, you know, unfortunately, this is how life is. You got to plot and plan and, you know, when it's war, you peace. And when it's peace, you prepare for war. This is how life is. And um, the third book, I would say, uh, I like the autobiography of Malcolm X. I can relate to Malcolm X because I have a rebel spirit. And I, you know, I mean, I come from a background of the streets and Malcolm X had a background from the streets and he changed his life over. I might not be as fast as he did, but I didn't go to prison to become Muslim either. I was, I was still living in the streets. There's no excuse though, but I can relate to the brother a lot and I liked his book and, um, that would be my third choice. Hot books of all time. Three powerful choices there. Words. Yeah. What about um, if if you could work with any producer in the world right now, who would you work with? Well, I've worked with Johnny J. Wow. Johnny J. You know what I mean? Actually, I used to go to his house, man, before he died. He used to want me to come to the studio and sleep. And I used to be like, damn, I remember a time and this nigga didn't even. He used to tell me, you need more work. And then before he died, he used to be like, yo, your shit popping. He was impressed. And I was like, wow, not that good. You know what I mean? Because that shows you hard work pays off. You know, I was very unconfident when I was young. I had to, My confidence had to build. Yeah. I had to build in this rap shit. You know what I mean? And um, so I've worked with some big guys, but to, for now, mm, shout out to my nigga D Boy. I, I've, I've worked with some great producers. Um, my nigga Jay Classic, but these are guys that I grew, you know, that in my peer group and who are doing that thing now. But did some big shit, you know what I mean? But um, ah. Producer that's hot. I'll say Dre. Fuck it. Dr. Dre. No, yeah, no my, choice. Right. My little nigga massive. I ain't gonna say little nigga, but my nigga massive, you know what I mean? When I say little man, I'm a little older than him. But my brother, man, he 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 he, write, he writes for Dre. He produces for Dre. He does a lot of things. This is my man. I talk to him on the phone all the time. Right. And um he's done that. I'm fucking with him, I might it, it might happen one day, but that's that's massive, see, is it? No, not Matt. His name Mad. You said Mass V. Yeah, is that it? Yeah, yeah. I, I've seen him that's, on line. Yeah, he's awesome. That's my guy. Yeah. Yeah. All right, there. You know everyone, man. It's like and like you're a legend yourself. You, I, I can just see some real cool stuff coming. I can't wait for you yeah. to drop these albums. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. I, I got some shit I want to leave you before I get up out of here. I got a little verse. Yeah. It's my letter, my letter to Tupac, you know what I mean? And it goes, uh, it's like deja vu when I jump in the booth. Truthfully speaking, I'm still thugging for you. Man, if it wasn't for you, giving niggas their confidence, middle fingers up, I don't fuck with the president. I'm an outlaw now, the future and past tense. Ever since you died, the game ain't been the same since. Tom ticks and it's flying by the second. Your little homie H. Rodder made himself a legend. Thug life, rapper, nobody do it better. Kanye West, I spit Kanye and Pepper. Can't let it go. I want it more than ever. Thug in peace, my nigga. Hussein Fatal. I'm still in the game. It's like a two-game tangle. Hard to believe most of my niggas turned strangers. Who responsible for bringing me to the table? Manu, Big Sight. Bill Bangham, I'm still in contact with the Thug Queen Storm. These six letters forever. Tatted on my arm. It's a war going on. I keep my soldiers strong. Feed them. The words of a lot. I'm still on my job, nigga. I'm still on top. When I wrote this verse, I was thinking about Pac and Killer Gaddafi. Big H, my pops, is one of a kind. 
Him and your mom used to kick it all the time. Me and EDI, we kicked it all the time. He be giving me game. I perfected my aim. My nigga Marble still a problem. KV, part of me. He took a Shahada right in front of me. Two sons and three daughters. In his book, I'm the author. Ain't nobody fucking with me. I go harder. I was trained by the game, little nigga. Think smarter. It's my time to tell my story. Young noble getting older. Still one of the coldest little move. Finally got that chip off the shoulder. The brother on his dean. I mean, Napoleon really clean. Mashallah. I truly love my squad. I feel blessed to be alive. Things wasn't the same after you got shot at quad. Big stretch. Can't front. I love him to death. I spoke to majesty after all the tragedy. Outlaw cemetery ripped apart my family. Remember little Mill? He grew up with no mother and father. The death of his parents affected him still. Feel his pain. That's my nig. It don't matter if he wrong or right. That's my dog for life. I miss V12 in the jacket. The time said he passing. DJ, I helped carry your body through the janazza. When I saw the daughter, I said, when I saw the look on your daughter's face, that's when I felt the saddest. Feel me? Yeah, H. Ryder, man. Like I told I got shit for you niggas, man. I promise you. And that's my letter to pop. You know what I mean? Oh, that man. On his few past years that passed by, and H. Ryder made a name for his motherfucking self. You know what I mean? Man, I don't even know what to say. That was, that was the best. <laughs> I appreciate it, my nigga. Man. One love. Man, one love, man. That was, man. You got me chills. I appreciate that, man, from the bottom of my heart. True story. But like I say, I got so much better. And like I say, hard work makes, you know, is, is everything. If you stay dedicated to something, you stay down for something, it's proof that you can, uh, you know, come off. Hold on, I got, I got one more for you. I said, uh, let me spit that over. I said, look, ain't no secret. I'm trying to die a believer. Ramadan is here, and I'm thankful to see it. This the month of mercy in my soul. So thirsty. Just had a genesis for DJ. That shit hurt me. I didn't see it coming. Move 100 miles and run. I went from nothing to living like Philip Drummond. Being Mars, the family watched me hit up something. Before I touch the block, I got an office a lot. I beg a lot for just one more shot. Take me back in the studio when I was thugging with Pop. I would have jumped in the booth whether he liked it or not. Jackpot, 25 years later, it finally happened. H. Ryder getting paid off this fucking rapping. Never give up on proof that anything can happen. Keep your head up and go all out for your paper. I'm in Vegas now. I'm in Jamaica. I'm really major. Rude boy, tell that little punk bitch I don't need no favors. I'm self-employed. All these hoes never check for the boy. Now all of a sudden you want to try to check for the boy? Business never personal. I'm just charging more. Worldwide tour, outlaw, warrior. I'm a set of the score. Yeah, I told you before. Set it off. Nigga, I'm ready for war. I start your heart gets my own desires because I ain't trying to Taste of fire, it's a battle. Hamza versus H. Rodder, no food and water. I pray I catch the night of power. I pray Allah get a dean to my sons and daughter. Inshallah, I said, I, I pray Allah get a dean to my sons and daughter. DJ, I'm going to help you raise your daughter. Her and Fatima, just like we used to see it. I pray Illy and your mother become believers. Man. Yeah, yeah, man. I love it. We rapping over niggas' heads, man. We're not just talking ignorant rap and ignorance and I fucked my mom and the like, what are you niggas talking about, bro? Yeah. You niggas be um, that's what I mean by topics. Give me a topic so I can learn and go read and find out what's a lot mean. What does this mean? What does that mean? Like feed my soul. I don't want to hear I know about getting my dick sucked. I can already I, we heard that a million times. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I try to mix some of that. Heavy talking there just to get that just to give them a message. I'm still talking their language, but I gotta give them a message, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Man, that's awesome. I appreciate it, man. I, I went and yeah, bought can... a heap of music yesterday too on iTunes. Yeah, all that shit is oh, unfortunately, I ain't gonna lie, that shit is old. My new shit is on a different level, it's on a different wavelength. All oh, that's why I'm mad at myself because I haven't released it, but yeah. I got you. Promise you, I got you. Thank you, man. True yeah, story. Can't wait for it. Like, yeah, I love that. I wanted to say, I love the one you did with cocaine too, smoke and mirrors. Yeah, I got other shit 
Cocaine too, I gotta drop. Me and Coca, that's my big bro right there, man. Mm. I got real history. I fuck with Cocaine. It's my that's my big brother right there, man. Shout out to Cokeezy. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah, shout out to Uncle Coca. He's a legend too. Coca for sure. Uh, yeah, he's awesome. But um, yeah, I guess I wanted to ask I've asked you about the business advice and yeah, you know, keeping it positive. But what can I get your top three movies before you go? Top three move top three movies. Yeah. Uh when I was a kid, I used to love Bruce Lee. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um uh, Enter the Dragon was one of my I never feel me. Oh shit. Oh, I didn't, even, I didn't yeah. even see that. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce Lee was my nigga, bro. As a kid, that was my first. I used to make the hangers. You know the hangers that come with the pants that you yeah. can take off? And boom, and bend that motherfucker. I had my nunchucks. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Then I, used to, I ain't gonna front. I was a Superman. I used to like Superman. These are my kid films. Yeah. So my first, I would say Bruce Lee, Superman, um, Third movie as a kid, I would say. Man. I just like this movie called Never End the Story. It was like a weird ass fiction. It, like it used to come on Channel Thirteen in LA. It was weird, but it was dope. I used to like it. Something like that, right? But as a yeah. dope, my top three, I would say. Uh, Mm, that's a tough one. Top three movies of all time. Scarface. Yeah. Juice. Yeah. Mm, Menace to Society. Fuck it. Wow. Yeah, that's three good choices there as well. No, but those are like, but it's other so many other good movies. Actually, Training Day was a motherfucker. I like, Denzel. like, great. But the plot in some of those other movies too was very, uh, for me, it was very, um, like, Minister Society was very familiar with the plots and things of that nature. That's why we relate to those movies so well. But Outside of that, so many great films, so it's like hard. Those are like more violent than what I'm used to. And as far as outside the box, they got shit like, oh, I see, you got shit like Rush Hour, funny movies, yeah. Jack, shit like that. So it's hard, bro. But because I gave you some real violent films, like <laughs> Scarface. Yeah. You know what I mean? But outside of that, it's a lot of other shit that's. A lot of great movies out, man. Yeah, but they don't make used to. I can also say that as well, too. It's all change. Yeah, the box office got to be seeing us. It's not the same shit back in the day when we used to go. It's like music sales. It got to yeah. be box office sales. Got to be shitty. Yeah. From Netflix and all this shit, nobody's going to the movies no more. Artists? No, I, yeah, I can't remember the last time I've been to the movies, to be honest. What did you think about that Tupac film? Man, I, I honestly liked it. I know, I know a lot of people gave it some some flack, but I think, I don't know, maybe because I'm such a big fan, I was, I was going to love whatever came out. But I, I loved it, to be honest. Yeah, I, I have I have definitely different uh, mixed feelings about it, but yeah, I feel like Tupac movie got to be way bigger than that, man. That shit. It's got to be a series, I think. It's. His life was, yeah, it's too hard to put him in in, in one movie. Yeah. It's, 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 it's got to be like Lord of the Rings or something. <laughs> exactly. You ain't but, bullshit. Yeah, I, I did like it, i I got to I gotta say. But, yeah, I would have liked to have seen more. But, yeah, I guess it would have been hard for him to try and put. Yeah, I don't know. It's a tough one for me. But, yeah, true story, man. Yeah, definitely. I I I won't keep you too long because I know it's late there. Um, I just want to ask yeah. about the One Nation album. I'm gonna apply pressure. You you're on that song too. I'm, 
with the outlaws that was awesome yeah how was it working on that project uh shout out to my nigga edi man that was me edi and jail felony and uh shit, that was awesome man being part you know because that was an album that tupac talked about doing before he passed he wanted to do an album called one nation and um you know we seen it through and and carried that carried that legacy for big bro and um I was blessed to be on a song called Mass. I mean, not Mass, that uh, Fly Pressure. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, that's my shit right there. I fuck with that joint. I ended that song off, you know what I mean? Yeah. Man, appreciate it. It's, yeah, it's been great talking to you, man. And appreciate you taking the time. And yeah, it's awesome that I'm finally actually talking to you. Oh, it's all love, man. I appreciate the, the reach out and um, giving yeah. me a. Some time on your platform, giving me some shine, giving me some flowers, man. I appreciate. I'm very thankful and grateful. All uh, praise be to a lost one of Watala. I appreciate the love, man. I'm very. I'm, I'm one of the type of guys that, as I said, I come from a, a humble background, a humble beginning. So, any type of real love I get, I truly, truly, truly appreciate it because uh, God made me work for my situation. I it wasn't no handouts, and you know, it was pure. Pure grind, man. Pure grind. Definitely, man. Yeah, it's, you've had some like awesome messages since we've been talking. It's yeah, inspiring. We'll definitely keep in touch as well. So, yes, sir. Yeah, you know, appreciate you getting back to me even. And yeah, it's Hate Rider on Thomas Berryman TV. It's, it's been good. VMR, man, you know who we are. Definitely. CPR, A, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, if you're happy, man, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, me as well, man. You brought some energy to me, man. I'm finna take that and run with it, you know what I mean? Sure. Definitely appreciate the opportunity to be on the on the, um, on the the platform, you know? Definitely. Uh, so yeah, I appreciate having you in. Yeah, I'll edit it as quick as I can and get some clips out. My boy Thomas, and I appreciate you, man. God bless you. Look forward to the linking up with you in real life and we can put some things together, you know, see what you got going on, see what I got going on, and go from there, man. I can tell you a great person. You got a lot of history and did your research on things, and I'm, like I said, I'm very appreciated, you know what I mean? Yeah, man, I can't wait. It'll happen one day. It'd be great to meet you. We'll yes, sir. Work on something together. All right. It's all love, bro. Thanks, man. Bless you, and I'll talk to you soon. Say sure. that, then. One love. Appreciate you. One love, man. Catch you. All right, bro. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon, bro. See ya. Outlaw love. Oh, for hell. Oh, for hell, outlaw for life. Yes. <laughs>